Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I'm really excited about today's video. Today we're going to be learning about Ohm's Law, which is absolutely fundamental to not only passing your electrical examination or certification, but just being a well-rounded electrician. If you're experienced in the field, this is going to unlock a lot of things for you in troubleshooting and just understanding how it all fits together. So before we dive into it, I want to let you know that you can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to take the practice quizzes that go along with these videos and unlock all of the pro features. So we're going to jump right in with the basics first, and then we're going to learn what these flaming E, I, and R actually stand for. Let's get to it. Ohm's law was discovered by Georg Ohm, and the relationship states that the current passing through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across those two points, and inversely proportional to the resistance between them. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but we're going to break it down piece by piece and see how it's relevant and fundamental to our getting our license or certification. This picture I keep showing you is the Ohm's Law Pyramid. It's also an easy way to remember the Ohm's Law Formula. Does anyone know what the E stands for? That's right, it's electromotive force. It refers to the potential difference generated by a source of electrical energy, such as a battery or generator. It's the electrical pressure that pushes or pulls the electrons through the circuit. And just remember when you're dealing with this Ohm's Law Pyramid that the E stands for voltage. Does anyone know what the I stands for? That's right, the I stands for electrical current and it's the rate at which the electric charge flows past a point in the circuit. The standard unit of electrical current is the ampere, often shortened to amp and we're gonna call it an amp throughout the rest of our program. The amount of electrical current refers to the quantity of charge passing through the circuit per unit of time. So there's a whole lot of electrons, it's a very large number, but we've all agreed that one amp is one amp and that's how we deal with it in amps or smaller or much larger as we're gonna learn throughout the program. But just remember in this relationship that the I stands for current. Does anyone know what the R stands for? That's right, it's electrical resistance. And it is a property of a material or a component that quantifies how it resists or opposes the flow of electric current. And it's usually measured in ohms. It's letting us know how much it's resisting that electrical flow that we're trying to produce with the voltage, which is also going to affect the amperage that flows through the circuit. All three of these are directly related together. Remember that the E stands for voltage, the I stands for amperage, and the R stands for resistance. Let's get to it. All right, let's put this all together. The picture I keep showing you is a formula, and it's an easy way to remember this relationship. We have E on top of a division line, and then down below it is the I and the R. Now they're smushed together, and that would be implied multiplication. But just to make it easy to understand while we're laying the basics here, I went ahead and put the multiplication sign in between it. And what this relationship is saying is that as long as we know any of the two, we can always find the unknown. Now, if you're like me, I don't like a ton of math, but thankfully all the math in this program is sixth grade math. If I can do it, you can do it, trust me. And what this relationship states is that I know, if I know any of the two, I can always solve for the unknown. If I know I and R, I can just multiply. If I know E and R, I can just divide and it'll let me know what I is. If I know I and E, I can just divide and it'll let me know what R is. And we're gonna break this down piece by piece and show you that you can do it. Let's imagine that we have a 120 volt circuit with a 10 amp draw. What is the resistance on this circuit? Well, what I love about formulas is you just plug in what you know. Draw it exactly how it looks. I put my 120 on top, I know my current, I set it up in this manner, then all I have to do is divide. I divide 120 by 10, and it lets me know that there should be 12 ohms of resistance on this circuit. Meaning I should be able to put my amp clamp out and, and read 10, I should be able to put my voltmeter out and read 120, and I should also be able to measure the resistance and measure 12 ohms. If I don't have that, there's something wrong. 
there's something failed, there's something broken, there's something disconnected, there's something causing more resistance that's gotten in the circuit. It's really great for troubleshooting. And I know that it's gonna unlock a lot for you, not only with your testing, but also out in the field. In this case, we have a 120 volt circuit with 12 ohms of resistance on it. What is the amp draw on this circuit? Well, what I love about formulas is we just plug in what we know. We know we have 120 volts. We know that we have 12 ohms of resistance. And we're going to look at this like a division line. We just take 12 and divide up into 120. We set it up like this. 120 divided by 12 equals 10. That lets us know that there should be 10 amps of current on this circuit. We should be able to read with our meter and verify that there is 10 amps. If there's not, if it's way low or way high, we know that we have a problem. Finally, we have a circuit with 10 amps on it and 12 ohms of resistance. What is the voltage? Well, we plug in what we do know. In this case, we're solving for E, and we know that we have 10 amps and 12 ohms. Now all we have to do is follow our Ohm's Law Pyramid and multiply this out. We take 10 multiplied by 12 equals 120. So E equals 120. Great job. All right, let's do some Ohm's Law practice. You can do it. I'm going to go a little bit slow here, so if you want to pause the video and try it on your own, you can. We have 120 volts. We have 16 ohms of resistance. What is the current? That's right. It's 7.5 amps. All we had to do was take 120 divided by 16, and that lets us know that we have 7.5 amps on this circuit. We have 120 volts. We have 15 amps. What is the resistance on this circuit? That's right. It's 8. Great job. All we have to do is take 120 divided by 15, and that lets us know that there is 8 ohms of resistance on this circuit. We have this scenario, and we're solving for voltage. We have 4 amps and 69.25 ohms of resistance. We take and multiply that out, multiply 4, multiplied by 69.25, and that lets us know that we have 277 volts on this circuit. Great job. Now let's learn about another relationship, and that relationship is called pi. And I don't know if you're like me, I love a good piece of pi. In this equation, we know that the I stands for amps and the E stands for voltage. And this equation is saying I times E equals P. But what does the P stand for? That's right, it stands for electric power. Electric power is the rate of energy consumption in an electrical circuit. The electric power is measured in the unit of watts. And this is true on our side of the tracks that 75 watts is equivalent to 75p. Just like we set up our previous formula like this, we're going to set this one up like this. And I like to think of pi, P-I-E, makes it easy for me to remember. And just like in the other formula, as long as we know two of the three, we can always solve for the unknown. Let's give it a try. In our first scenario, we have a 1200 watt load on a 120 volt circuit. What will the amp draw be? Well, we just plug in what we know. We know the wattage and we also know the voltage and we're trying to solve for the current. And just like in the previous formula, all we have to do is divide. So we divide it out and we end up with 10 amps. We have a 1200 watt load with a 10 amp draw. What is the voltage? Well, let's plug in what we know. We know our wattage and our amperage, and all we're looking for is to solve our voltage. So we divide and we get 120. And if we have a 120 volt circuit with 10 amps on it, what will the wattage be? That's right. All we have to do is multiply it out. And when we multiply 10 by 120, that equals 1200 watts. We're going to need to be very familiar with this for the rest of the program. We're going to have to convert back and forth between watts, kilowatts, back down to amps and everything in between to be able to pass our examination. If you'll head over to electricalexamcoach.com, 
you'll be able to do the practice tests that go along with these videos. These videos are great, and I'm glad that they're here for you as a resource. But when you couple it with the testing center and everything that we offer at electricalexamcoach.com, it truly is the recipe if you really want to get your license or certification. Let's get to it.